Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interested in today's video. The news that the Huawei Mate 60 Pro mobile phone is on sale and equipped with the new Kirin 9000S chip has spread like wildfire, causing a sensation around the world in just a few days. The United States, Japan, Germany, the United Kingdom, China and other countries and regions have disassembled and verified this mobile phone, confirming that the chip comes from mainland China, which also means that China has broken the US chip technology blockade. After the return of Kirin chips, the United States once again stated that it would continue to sell chips to China, but not the top ones. But this time it is no longer a question of whether the United States can sell chips, but whether China should. Foreign media, the biggest loser has emerged. Raimondo once again expresses his position on Chinese chips. In response to the US restrictions on Chinese chips, there are many voices of opposition in the US industry. Three years ago, Microsoft founder Bill Gates said that not selling chips to China would force them to be self-sufficient. Is this really a good thing? NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang also said that there is only one Chinese market, and if it cannot trade with China, it will cause huge damage to the United States. Similar voices are rising one after another in the semiconductor industry in the United States and even around the world, with only one original intention, and that is to hope that the United States will abandon sanctions on Chinese chips so that they can carry out free trade with China. Otherwise, as Bill Gates said, China will be self-sufficient. In fact, this sentence has been verified. The Mate 60 Pro mobile phone launched by Huawei is equipped with the Kirin 9000S made in mainland China. Laboratory organizations in many countries and regions have analyzed this chip, and the conclusions are consistent, confirming that China has the manufacturing capabilities of Kirin 9000S, an advanced process chip. Even CCTV conducted a special report on this chip. Lu Tingjie, a professor at Beijing University of Posts and Telecommunications, said in an interview that this time it has made progress from zero to one. Now that advanced process chips have been produced, it stands to reason that the US chip sanctions are meaningless and the chip ban should be completely relaxed. However, US. Commerce Secretary Raimondo once again expressed his position on Chinese chips, saying that the United States can continue to sell chips to China, but not the top ones. This is in the interests of the United States and allows American companies to continue to develop their innovation capabilities. The United States has chosen a have it and have it strategy with China. It wants to make money in the Chinese market and prevent the rise of China's technology. Therefore, the United States chooses to sell less advanced chips to China. But this time it's not a question of whether the United States can sell it, but whether China wants it. Foreign media, the biggest loser appears. Qualcomm becomes the biggest loser. Among the many American chip giants, who least wants to see the return of Kirin chips, and who least wants to lose the Chinese mobile phone chip market. There is only one answer, Qualcomm. In the past few years, Qualcomm received assistance from the United States. After the Kirin chip could not be put into production, Huawei was forced to switch to the Qualcomm camp. Many of its flagship mobile phones launched are equipped with Qualcomm Snapdragon processors. A report released by well-known analyst Minkai Kuo shows that from 2021 to 2022, the number of Snapdragon chips Huawei will purchase from Qualcomm is 23 to 25 million and 40 to 42 million respectively. With such a large amount of chip purchases, Qualcomm is winning and making a lot of money. In addition, other domestic mobile phone manufacturers are rushing to buy Qualcomm chips. During the global chip shortage, the delivery period of Qualcomm chips has been extended to more than half a year, and orders are pouring in. 
But now that the chip shortage is over and Kirin chips are back, Qualcomm is also facing the risk of completely losing orders from Huawei. Minkai Kuo said that Qualcomm will be the biggest loser and will be hardest hit by the return of Kirin chips. It is expected that in 2024, Qualcomm's SoC chips shipped to Chinese mobile phone manufacturers will decrease by 50 to 60 million year on year, and the number will decrease year by year. Qualcomm lost not only Huawei chip orders, but also other mobile phone manufacturers. Everyone has seen the popularity of Mate 60 Pro. It has been snapped up as soon as it went on sale. Online platforms sold out in seconds and offline flagship stores have long queues. Everyone is buying Huawei's new flagship phone and other mobile phone manufacturers are facing huge challenges. The competitive pressure will inevitably lead to a decline in market share and a sharp decline in mobile phone shipments. It is only a matter of time before Huawei returns to the top three in the market, and it is not impossible for Huawei to even regain the top spot in the domestic mobile phone sales rankings. As a result, Qualcomm's chip orders from other Chinese mobile phone manufacturers will naturally be significantly reduced. Therefore, it is not groundless to say that Qualcomm is the biggest loser. It's time for the United States to recognize the reality. The U.S.'s restrictions on Chinese chips seem to protect the U.S. semiconductor industry and allow the U.S. to maintain its leading edge in the chip industry. In fact, they are prompting China to accelerate self-research on chips. The disassembly report of the Kirin 9000S chip equipped with Mate 60 Pro has been released and its performance has reached the level of advanced manufacturing processes. CCTV reported that Huawei has achieved localization of 10,000 parts. The domestic production rate of Mate 60 Pro has reached 90%, but it does not contain any American chip technology. It is not an exaggeration to say that Huawei has got rid of its dependence on American chip technology. This is only getting rid of dependence on hardware chips, not to mention that the software operating system has also achieved Harmony OS's self-sufficiency. You must know that Huawei is a loyal user of American technology. Ren Zhengfei has repeatedly stated that he wants to learn from excellent American technology. This step of completely debutifying Huawei is entirely caused by the United States itself. It's time for the United States to recognize the reality. Restrictions will not make American technology stronger, but will only plunge American companies into the quagmire of anti-globalization development. They lose the support of the consumer market and it is impossible for them to have continuous innovation capabilities because the mid to low end chips that the United States is allowed to sell will sooner or later be completely replaced by China, more problems in the high end chip industry chain